If you wish to speak and you haven't filled out one of those little slips, looks like we have an abundance of already filled out slips. <laughs> Holy smokes. Uh, so uh, where, if you're sitting at a place where there's an empty seat, could you raise your hand and people in the back might make use of that. There are a couple of seats in the front. I used to say to students that these are the A seats. There's a seat over here. And I guess the rest of you have chosen to hold the walls up. That's a good thing to do. Okay. You can't hear, Mark? Oh. <laughs> well, then it doesn't matter. Come and sit in the front. You're very lucky. <laughs> Come and sit in the front row. I'll try to speak up. Does that sound better? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, welcome to you all. And we, we go to, uh, we, I notice that, that everyone is here, so roll call is dispensed with. We move to directly to um, uh, the hearing of citizens. I have uh, a bunch of folks who, who want to speak. <coughs> I guess it would be really helpful if, if you come to the microphone and you discover that somebody has already said what you wanted to say. Well, it'd really be okay just to stay, step up to the microphone and say just that. It would save a lot of time. Uh, also, uh, this, this is... Uh, this is an exercise in practical democracy. There are lots and lots of folks here who want to say something and want to be heard, um, especially the trustees. We, we want to hear what you have to say. Um, applause tends to stifle what others might want to say. It has a chilling impact on, on uh, the dialogue. So I would, I would really very much prefer not to have applause or booze or any other kind of audible response. If you feel tremendously, overwhelmingly in favor of something, um, you might just raise your hand and wiggle it or maybe that'll do it for you. Uh, but in terms of the time required, that would be um, our preferred approach. Uh, I will call on you by name and I'll call this the name of the person who is next to speak so that you can sort of wind your way up here. Uh, the first is a person who is not a stranger to this hall, that is Peter McDougall. Uh, 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 just, 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 just wave. Just wave. And Phil, Phil Wyatt is next on the docket. Uh, Two minutes, and please ring that thing loudly so that, and we'll, we'll be here for a while. Dr. Haslin, members of the board, I appreciate the opportunity to address you today. When I retired as superintendent president nearly nine years ago, I made a vow to myself that I would not become involved in the business of the college unless requested to do so by the superintendent president. Until today, I kept that vow and have participated only when asked by former President Romo and Superintendent President Serban. However, I am here today not at the request of Superintendent President Serban, but because of my deep concern for the current turmoil involving the college's top leadership, i.e., you the board and the Superintendent President and the potential of such dysfunction, if not effectively resolved, to have long-term and substantial consequences for this wonderful college. I'm here also because I am confident, based upon my experience as Santa Barbara City College's superintendent president for 21 plus years, that the capacity to resolve matters is well within your combined capabilities. Further, that doing so is best for you, the board, the superintendent president, Andrea Serban, and frankly, most important, the college 
and the students and the community it serves. Since I left the college, the most substantial change at SBCC occurred last November, specifically when the voters determined four new trustees would join the three previously elected board members and assume board level leadership for policy development, implementation, and general oversight for the college. Adjustments for a change of such magnitude are to be expected. Also expected is that the time, the patience, and understanding needed to comprehend both the complexities of governing a college with a 100-year history and the views of newly elected board members would be provided. Without assigning responsibility or blame for the results, such outcomes appear far from being achieved. And today the college finds itself on the brink of decisions being made that could well shatter the sense of community and perhaps effectiveness of what has been one of the most cohesive and successful of California's 112 community colleges. And in addition, greatly impact individual and professional lives. I cannot believe that there is a person in this room that would want to see such result occur. And certainly neither do the college's exceptional faculty and staff, our students who so depend on this college and the community deserve such outcomes. Given these observations, what might I suggest to you? First, I offer you an analogy of a passenger train proceeding on high mountain tracks confronting dangerous curves and at a rather high rate of speed. It is a person in control, i.e. the conductor, who will make the judgments that will result in the train and its passengers proceeding safely to its destination or lives being lost. Not to be overly dramatic, but at this point in the college's history, history, it is you seven trustees that collectively represent SBCC's conductor. Your decisions will substantially affect whether the college will continue as a vibrant, cohesive community committed to excellence or an entity with many splintered elements. My specific suggestion is slow down. There appears to be no obvious imperative for immediate action. Specifically, the college, given the extremely challenging fiscal environment in which it is functioning, is, is well prepared to meet contingencies. The superintendent president is a proven leader with broad-based support among the college's faculty and staff governance groups and the community. The college faculty and staff represent high levels of competence and are deeply committed to the institution. The community, as represented by the Foundation for Santa Barbara City College and many community groups, that community is deeply supportive and appreciative of all the college provides. In short, the main pieces are in place for the college to continue to thrive. There is, however, an obvious need for all seven board members and the superintendent president to agree on how their respective responsibilities will be fulfilled and specifically how the views of newly elected trustees can be considered and as appropriate integrated into the college's plans for the future. The options are clear. Act immediately to fix a problem that has not been clearly defined, or take the additional time needed to determine whether a cohesive board president leadership team can be formed. Certainly this wonderful college community, our students, and the South Coast communities served deserve your patience and a good faith effort 
that has extended well beyond the few months that have transpired since last November. This effort to develop the cohesive board superintendent leadership team that the college requires. Given the talents and obvious commitments possessed by the superintendent president and you trustees, I believe firmly such an outcome can be achieved. And I wish you well. Thank you, Thank you Peter. You're, you're trying, and, and I, I appreciate it. Uh, your, your capacity for, for two minutes has uh, <laughs> sort of reminds me when you gave the, 20 years he gets it. Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's special dispensation. Phil Wyatt, you're next. <laughs> two minutes for Phil. <laughs> two minutes for Phil. Well, I can't use that as a, as a, a measure of the, okay. And who's next? I'm here today to praise the board, congratulate you for a remarkable, wonderful service these past few months on behalf of the many citizens of this community that elected you, surprisingly, but it was a remarkable victory for the citizens of this area. <clears throat> Since you've taken office, the number of hours you spend in one month in session equals maybe a year or so from the previous boards that we have seen over the years. And, uh, it should be pointed out that this is the first time a board has had a person who is a CPA who can read these strange financial machinations. And for the first time, our board knows where the money is going and is finding out where a lot of it went. Uh, last year, the citizens replaced this huge, uh, this, the board, uh, four members of the board, despite a huge last minute onslaught of tremendous funds buying television time, newspaper time, everywhere, and it didn't work. Now, in retrospect, I spoke to one of your distinguished members afterwards, Maury Jerkowitz, who I've known for many years, and he said, well, he said, Phil, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have spent the money. I should have given it to the scholarship group. And what I would like to suggest is that since there is a lot of angst and anger going on in the community because this board has been so successful, if you really feel angry, take your anger out by putting money into the foundation. And the more anger you have, the more determined you are to change this board, put it in writing by writing a huge check to the foundation, and that's what I urge you to do. The envelopes are there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. Mr. Ken, do I have a right to respond? If I would like to say one brief thing, Phil, your, your quote of my of my my our talks was completely inaccurate. I don't want to embarrass you by what I told you. Okay, Cornelia, you're next, and after that, uh, Larry Salzman. Honorable board members, times are difficult. We need to make the best decisions for this college, for our students. In order to do this, we need to have all facts on the table. We need to clearly understand the relevant financial issues and parameters. We need to ask the right questions, and we need to have full transparency. Unfortunately, within the last three years, there have been significant problems with this. Let me illustrate them with a few examples. And by the way, please be assured that for every word I say here, I have proof and documentation. In the last board study session, you were discussing the size of the necessary fund reserves. This is an extremely important question in these times as we balance significant financial constraints with a desire to serve our students. At that meeting, our college president pointed out that she wants the board to take past cash flow patterns for future decision making and make sure that we would have enough cash to cover peaks in the cash outflow. I agree. That is a good idea. However, then she stressed to you that, quote, there was one month where we used $18 million from reserves to make the cash flow. And that's, this would be that peak which needed to be covered. But this is simply not correct. As clearly labeled in that very report, almost $8 million of that amount went from the general fund reserves right into the construction and equipment reserves. 
It only transferred from one location in our reserves into another one. It did not leave the reserves. It was not used up. And according to this cash flow report, the largest actual net outcome, net out, net cash outflow from reserves last year never left the single digit millions, not even close to the amount you were given. Another example, a little bit further in the past, at a 2010 meeting, Dr. Saban explained to the board, and I quote from the minutes here, that the state had instituted deferrals, meaning that if you depend on a monthly paycheck, this deferral means that for five months of a year you don't get a paycheck that month, you get a paycheck in a lump sum much later. Well, I'm worried. This demonstrates a serious misunderstanding <coughs> of college funding processes by our president. The college does not depend on a monthly paycheck from the state, but several paychecks from several different sources. The amount coming directly from the state is only about 55% of the college revenue, and only a fraction of that 55% was uh, deferred. Honorable members of the Board of Trustees, I have many more examples for you, but I'm running out of time. But please let me thank you that in the past seven months you were working tremendously hard to get the facts right, to ask the important question, to reach clarification on what our financial parameters are, to bring back transparency to this college in order to benefit the institution and its students. I wish everybody in this room was able to recognize this because especially in times like these we should all work together. I fully trust you that you are making the right decisions today and in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Larry uh, Salzman and Larry is followed by Ellen Stoddard. Hello, thank you. Uh, um, last year there was a sea change at this college and I was happy to be in a small way part of helping elect four new um, members to the Board of Trustees and I supported them then and I supported them now. And during that campaign, it was very clear that it was never about Dr. Sabat. It was about the direction of the college and the fact that many in the community who cared about credit courses, who cared about ESL classes, who cared about adult education, who cared about uh, faculty members and who cared about the whole range of things were unhappy with the direction this college was moving in. That change has happened and I think so far it's going Great, I know there's disagreement among board members and that's what democracy is all about and that's a good thing. I think uh, I disagree with the first speaker. I think it is time to come to decisions and to do things and I would, I'm very sorry that all of you, are, three of you are being subjected to a campaign of harassment which may be legal but which I think is pretty lousy after coming seven months after a very strong mandate from the people who actually are the bosses. And after that, the Board of Trustees are the bosses and the President works for the Board, not the Board for the President. So I encourage you to do what you think is best. I have a great deal of trust in you as a Board and I am sure you will make thoughtful, good decisions. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Larry. Ellen is followed by Charmaine Jacobs. Good afternoon, President Haslin, members of the Board, President Sherbon. I've been a member of the Santa Barbara City College faculty for over 25 years. I'm here to thank you, the members of the Board of Trustees, for the dedication you put into your work here at the college. In November, the community chose new representation for Santa Barbara City College, largely because we wanted trustees who would ask questions, think independently, and provide critical oversight for our college. Now, some people who seem uncomfortable with this new level of questioning and review criticize you and label your involvement micromanagement. But I do not. In fact, I wonder, how are trustees supposed to communicate their concerns when they perceive serious problems with the college? What are trustees supposed to do when they clearly lack the information they need to make informed decisions? As I see it, you're simply doing what we, the voters, asked you to do. I also appreciate the many hours you have spent in the evaluation process for our president superintendent. While I recognize that much of your review must remain confidential, I have full confidence that together you have had many thoughtful and intensive discussions, 
looked at the situation from all perspectives and considered various options as you reflected on the type of leadership you deem appropriate for our college community. So I support you as you work together to arrive at the best solution for the future of Santa Barbara City College. And I urge my friends and my colleagues here today to take a deep breath and let you, the trustees, fulfill the responsibilities we elected you to do. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Charmaine, uh, to be followed by Toby Bradley. Thank you very much, um, honorable trustees. And nice to see people showing their signs. Show them if you brought them. Um, one of the reasons we're here today has been presented, at least in the media, as originating with uh, continuing ed students who didn't want to pay for their free classes. And that's not what it's about. Um, what it's about is squandering community investment, investment of money, investment of time, and investment of goodwill. Um, let me give some clarifications based on my personal experience and observations. The community was alarmed when nearly 100 popular adult ed classes were canceled. Their instructors laid off without warning on the first day of classes in 2009. Parent-child workshops were derailed. Sustainability programs were cut down. At the same time, continuing education administrators were hiring more administrative staff at $100,000-plus salaries. Buildings shot and wake were being, had been lovingly renovated by community fundraising campaigns, but were being slated for repurpose from their intended use for continuing education to instead be used for credit-side classroom space. Questions arose about management of Measure V funds. Those bonds or to build the education classroom space, what justification could there be for, continue, for taking over continuing education classroom space when tens of millions of dollars were available to create appropriate new space on campus? Construction utilizing Measure V funds has been poorly managed by the current administration and previous trustees. For example, consider the SBCC press box and the press release that featured former trustees, a few of you are still here, as you rolled up your shirt sleeves to eat chili dogs in the new $1,000 per square foot press box. $1,000 per square foot. The priorities of those trustees were inevitably questioned, and the public had doubts about President Sorbonne. While those trustees were wiping chili off their chins with President Sorbonne, faculty and classroom assistants were being laid off. Classroom sections on the credit and non-credit sides were being canceled. Students were set back in their efforts to transfer to four-year universities for lack of credits. And requests for fiscal disclosure were stonewalled. There was also a Brown Act inquiry from the channels. I wonder if when the channels is back in session, they'll look into, they'll reopen that Brown Act inquiry from a few years ago. The administration failed to provide any defined or consistent reason for these actions. Instead, false palliatives were issued. Administration and president declared that continuing education would be returned to 2008 baselines, that no space in shot or wake would be repurposed for any credit classes, that no faculty were being laid off, that the chancellor's office was directing the changes in continuing education, and that the budget emergency precluded discussion the public was shut out. Concern from faculty and community members ballooned as simple questions were met with indifference, obfuscation, and hostility. If you want an example of what passed in those days for reason and logic, ask me about Yellow Marker Man. Then last year, the Instructors Association and even past President Romo joined voters in supporting an overwhelming, and I will say it, glorious vote to put in four new trustees. We now have competent and elected, engaged leadership for our beloved community college, and so I offer today two thank yous in closing. Thank you, first of all, to our trustees. You are doing a superb job. And to the four newly electeds, you have our unblinking support. And thank you also to the elders of our community if there's anyone still here who thinks that there's a drum to beat about senior citizens who just don't want to pay for their classes, 
Well, there's no help for you drum beaters. I expect you are just trying to draw some attention to yourselves. Perhaps you could run for office. The rest of us, I'm going to take a moment to thank our Santa Barbara seniors and elders who took the heat and were willing to pull our collective bacon out of the fire and set things back on the right, right track. Thank you for shepherding our Measure V funds. Thank you for protecting our community voice in our community college. Thank you. We're, um, we're increasingly neglecting the two-minute rule. So uh, I, I won't be an absolute uh, dictator about it, but get closer, please. <laughs> Um, Toby uh, yes. and uh, Jane Metal will be next. Um, my name is Toby Bradley. Many of you may not know me because I haven't spoken on this issue over the years, but I have spoken on other issues. Marty knows me pretty well from the city council. We sometimes agreed and sometimes didn't. Um, but I'm here to support the four recently elected trustees, unequivocally. I've heard that term used before, even pronounced right here. Um, I am doing that because I have left the city council, the city uh, college and adult education comparatively alone because it seemed to be working for a lot of years. And it was very important to me. I've been here since 1966 when I came to do graduate work, except for a couple of years in the 70s, I have been there here ever since then. I love this city. I love this area. We've made use of the benefits of this area. My daughter went to City College. My husband and I have taken many adult education classes. I'm going to talk predominantly on the adult education side. I think that the adult education program in Santa Barbara is one of the most amazing and miraculous programs I have ever seen. And I think it symbolizes what is wonderful about this town. Community working together, not neglecting the elderly, not neglecting young people, and working together to build things. And that is something that I cannot bear to see attacked in any way. And that's partly why I got involved. As I started listening to what was going on in the last three years, I reached a conclusion pretty soon, actually, that what we had here was an administrator, a president who might be very qualified but did not understand Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is a very unique town, and there are people who have come here with all goodwill and not been able to understand how we function. I think that's what we have here. I believe that it was tremendously courageous of the four people who took the time and the energy to run and then to get elected um, to show that we need to make changes. And let me say, uh, people have said something like this, but I have a different way I want to put it. When you elect reform candidates, you expect them to do things differently. That's why you elect them. So when I read the letters to the editor recently, some of the letters, when I read some of the material about the recall elections, I find it very strange that what's being said is, these new people, gosh, they want to go to different meetings than the other trustees used to. They want to get different documents. They want to ask different questions. Well, I hope they do. That's why we elected them. If they were asking the same questions, I'd be very unhappy about what we've done. And I'm going to step farther maybe than some people have. You have to make the decision, and you're privy to a lot of the material that some of us can't be privy to. Certainly, transparency does not involve evaluation of um, the staff, and I, I cannot believe that there were some people saying that should have been made more public, the discussions uh, about the evaluation of President Serban. You have to make a decision and I only have part of the information, but I will tell you, I believe it is time to let her go. I believe that it is not in, um, I believe it's not in the best interests of this city to let someone who I believe doesn't understand this city and has not indicated a willingness over the last seven months, I think, to work with the people we have elected, stay. If you, Bang your head against the wall a lot of times. Or if a bird flies into a window a bunch of times and it doesn't open and it keeps flying in, we call them bird brains. There's got to be a time when you say, no more. It's got to be different. Um, it does. Be weird. Okay, I, I would like to just make one more point. Other people have gone on. And that is, a, a lot of other people went on. I only have one more point to make, excuse me. Um, I believe that I've heard, I've seen a lot that there are a lot of legal issues that are coming up here. And I'm going to say something else probably a lot of you won't like. 
I was an officer of the California Association of Realtors for four years, and our executive um, staff person said to us, listen to the lawyers, bring them in, hear what they have to say, but do not make your decisions based only on them. They can tell you risk. They cannot judge risk versus benefit. That is the job that you people have to do, and I hope you do it wisely. Thank you very much for the time you put in, and I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Uh, our next, Jane uh, Metal, and, uh, oh, it's Mathieu. I'm sorry. Uh, May I, B. Yeah. Hamlin is next. Before she starts, can I just uh, make a point of order here? Sure. There are people who are booing and hissing and so on. I think it's, it's very incumbent on our democracy to make sure that everybody feels safe to express their own opinion. And if you want to boo and hiss, you probably should go in another room and watch this on television later, because I don't think it's a safe place for people to express their opinion if you're either cheering or booing. And um, that's just my little point of order. Thank you. Jane? Members of the board, trustees, and superintendent president. I teach in the associate degree in nursing program, and I also am the department chair for Allied Health, which is our certified nursing assistant and home health aid program, and emergency medical technician, and I'm also the director for our Allied Health and Nursing Lab. And I have a bias. I want to have excellent health care programs for our students. We prepare most of the health care workers for the Santa Barbara community. And one of the things I really want to make a point is how effective Andrea Serban has been in working with the health technologies programs. One of the key things that has to happen and that she's done very well with is developing relationships with the health care agencies in the community. This is important because this is how we get our clinical placements enough of them and good quality for our students to have the experience that they need. Um, and you know what? We're no longer the only nursing program in Santa Barbara. So it's becoming competitive as well. So it becomes even more important, Andrea's role. Um, I also want to say, and of course, this has also um, resulted in us getting funding um, for clinical instruction and lab support from Cottage Health Systems. So her relationships have done a lot for us. She's been very supportive with our accreditations uh, for the nursing, um, National League of Nursing for the ADN program, and the sonography program, the new program, has just gotten accredited with support from Andrea Serban. Um, it's not just that. Her commitment to the healthcare area and to nursing goes even deeper, even to a personal level. Um, Andrea Serban actually comes on Saturdays and participates in the pinning ceremonies for the nursing students that are graduating. So it's very solid all around. Um, I would like to just make the point also that I feel that she's done particularly well with her leadership in the financial area. Um, with her mathematics and statistics background, she has a really good understanding of the budget. And we've come through this with no firing of, of full-time faculty um, or staff and with a reserve. And she has made a real effort to educate um, uh, the, the faculty and staff to the workings of the budget. It's been more transparent than any time that I remember. Um, and I would like to just end with saying, I can't believe it, but I have worked here for 35 years now. And you know what? That's five Santa Barbara City College presidents. <laughs> and frankly, from my perspective, Andrea Serban ranks among the best of the presidents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane. B. Hamlin is followed by uh, Jackie Huth. Good afternoon to Dr. Serban and also to the Board of Trustees. I'm B. Hamlin. I have a long, deep, and rewarding connection with this college. I retired five years ago as the director of the San Marcos Parent-Child Workshop. I proudly served there for over 36 years and uh, have made many wonderful connections with this community. I'm proud of this college, and we can all be proud of its academic stature and the diversity of the programs that are offered. Last November, four new trustees were elected to the board. Thank you. 
um, we need to let the entire board work together and do the job that they were elected to do. I'm counting on all of you to work together. Please do so. I speak sincerely. Thank you. Great example of timing. <laughs> okay, Jacqueline Huth is next, followed by John Wiley. Um, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Serban, we meet again. I'm back. Um, I'd like to follow up and, and endorse everything that Dr. McDougall said. Um, I also would just like to go on the idea that part of it is about continuing it. I think that's what started it, and I don't think that any of us can deny it. But I don't think that we can honestly say that this is a big division. I think nobody wants neither the credit nor anybody else wants to eliminate it. But I think we have to be realistic and try to work together. What I keep hearing is we need transparency. I think we need transparency as to what it is that everybody finds wrong. We hear com you know, comments about all the money that's been spent around the campus. Well, maybe we need transparency about the fact that so much of the money has been donated for specific reasons. You can't take the money and do something else with it when the donor says, I want to donate this for that person, you know, that, you know, that particular um, press box, that particular remodeling of a cafeteria or remodeling of the uh, um, cafe for whatever. There's been very, very much of that on this campus. And I think that's not understood. I think maybe we need transparency from the board. The board needs to put forth what it is they are investigating. I'm not asking for investigation or anything else about the evaluation of Dr. Serban. I think she's wonderful. You've heard me say that plenty of times. But what is it that you are looking at? We, we, we demand or deserve the transparency of what's wrong. Because we hear everybody telling you what they think is wrong. I think the community needs to know from you what is it that you think is wrong and what is it that you are working on. Thank you. Thank you. John Wiley and followed by Ann Wiley. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate this opportunity to thank you. I appreciate the many hours of hard work and contentious meetings you've endured on my <coughs> behalf. Addressing the many obvious recent problems at adult ed, at SBCC, <laughs> the whole college, I've worked at adult ed. I'm going to skip a, a paragraph I had written because I've heard it said so many times. Many of my most treasured friends are fellow SBC supporters, donors, faculty, administrators, staff, and students. All of them have strongly shared my opinion of your work. We saw a need for exactly the careful process you have begun, and we stand behind your actions and decisions. Despite the desperate and divisive reaction of a noisy few and the concerns of the misinformed and the uninformed, please know that we have been heartened and inspired by your work. To any of the remaining members of the previous board who have even occasionally been willing to openly engage with the new members for the benefit of SBCC, we say thank you. To the four new members who have respectfully and diligently created a sea change in board participation and review, thank you. 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 That's the way it is. It's upside down. Which means distress. That's it all. And uh, to be followed by uh, Marianne Kugler. Good afternoon, President Hasland, Board of Trustees, President Serban. I'm Ann Cameron Wiley, and I happily worked for SBCC for 15 years in the Continuing Education Division as director and then dean, having, uh, leaving this at about this time two years ago. 
I was responsible for several adult ed program areas, supervised many faculty and staff, and held a leadership position in the Santa Barbara educational community. From this perspective, I am well aware of the intricacies of the college environment, the demands, rules, and responsibilities. My attention was drawn to a letter sent to the accrediting committee of complaint about several of the new trustees, and in it I saw how much time and attention to detail they were engaged in. It had the opposite of the intended response in me. Instead of seeing it as micromanagement, I felt inspired with how seriously the new people are taking their job that we elected them to and grateful to these new board members for their caring and involvement. I appreciate the careful work and incredible amount of time they are devoting to learning about the many interrelated facets of the college and their attempts to correct the problems identified by faculty, staff, and community members. Hard choices don't please everyone. But I believe in the wisdom of our democracy and in the integrity of these members. I voted for all the new members. I strongly support them. And I thank all seven board members for your dedication and service to the college that we all love. Thank you. Thank you. Marianne is followed by uh, Candy Luria Budgar. Members of the board and President Serban, I am a um, relative newcomer to this community and have not had the privilege of living here for many, many years. And thus, in my travels across the country, I have seen many, many boards. I'd like to start by pointing out that the honor of being elected to a board is one of the highest honors that you can have in our country. It's also one of the toughest jobs. I want to thank you for the wonderful work that you've done in the last few months. As you know, I've attended many of your meetings. And I've been impressed by something that I just have not seen very often in elected boards under difficult financial circumstances. It is very clear to me that you are working very hard, all of you, to get appropriate information. It is also very clear to me that you are working very hard to disagree civilly. And I want to tell you how impressive that is and how impressed I am and how much I wish you could teach other boards the same civility. Now I want to talk just for a second about the future. You have hard decisions to make today. I'm sure you have hard decisions to make every time you meet. Those, those hard decisions will not change. And you will have faculty angry at you, staff angry at you, community angry at you, and in some cases your family angry at you. And that will happen over and over as long as you are board members. And so I am counting on your continuing to do what you have been doing in the last several months, which is maintaining your civility and your dedication to the very important job you hold. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Candy is followed by uh, Dr. Judith uh, Iskan Iskanian. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. There is a potentially toxic mystery going on here, and it's at Santa Barbara City College's expense. Several weeks ago, a meeting was called in Santa Barbara City College similar to this one. The purpose was to hear the public comments prior to concluding Dr. Serban's evaluation. It was <coughs> followed, like this one, by a closed session of the Board of Trustees. At the meeting several weeks ago, I witnessed 16 people who came up to the podium to give not just a satisfactory endorsement of Dr. Sirban, but a stellar endorsement. The people who spoke were eloquent. They were community members, students, professors, deans, business associates, donors, and veterans. 
They spoke about all angles of performance, including finance. In each case, they gave Dr. Sirban an A plus rating. After the public speaking, we were told that the Board of Tr Trustees would return and give us the results, as we deserved. I came with my mother, who also spoke eloquent, eloquently that day, endorsing Dr. Sirban, but we went home after the public speakers because we assured ourselves there was no need to stay. It was obvious that the evaluation was going to be excellent. The record will show that some of the audience waited until late into the night for the result of the evaluation, and still we did not get an answer. The public was told that the evaluation was complete, but because of the Privacy Act, they would not tell us the result. I am here to tell you that, to me, that is insulting to our intelligence as a community, that we have been forced over these past weeks to deduce and assume in order to come to an obvious conclusion that the review was negative. Since that moment in time, we've been informed by letters to the editor, op-ed pieces, and even headlines that the newly elected trustees have been accused of violating the Brown Act. But I'm not here to make a comment on that because those accusations have yet to be proved. I am here to question the validity and integrity of the evaluation. Under Dr. Sirbon's leadership, SBCC is in good financial standing, received an outstanding accreditation report with nine commendations. For the first time ever, we have a Hispanic institution status. For the first time ever, we, we received the Title V grant, which comes with a large monetary award. And for the first time ever, our superintendent president, Dr. Sirbon, was appointed by Secretary Hil Hillary Clinton to serve in the UNESCO, United Nations Education Commission. For the first time ever, SBCC received the Rice Diversity Award based on our sign language program and our veterans program. And for the first time ever, we received a, an award, top 101 colleges and universities combined in the country for our veteran serving, as, because we are a veteran serving institution. Here's that toxic, toxic mystery. How is it possible to give a negative evaluation of the college president in light of all these accomplishments and awards? What is afoot behind the closed sessions which would prompt you to consider disciplinary action and a release of her contract? Please act with integrity when you go into, again, closed session. If you have misjudged or made a mistake, I would like you to remove the negative evaluation from the record. I would like you to replace it with the one that Dr. Sirban deserves and give the community and Dr. Sirban a public apology. Then let's get back to business. Thank you. Easy to forget. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Iskanian? Yes, thank you. I am that Dr. Iskanian, and while I was earning that doctorate, I was here teaching as an hourly in the history department for over 10 years. And um, that was uh, a wonderful time to meet the young people. As I was waiting to speak, I'm looking behind me, not in this room, but outside, many young people like the ones I taught with signs saying, thank you, Dr. Serban. And I wonder what that means. I came down here not as well informed as many of you, and I was extremely interested to see who's here and the comments that they made and the hurt that they feel. Um, I see people from continuing education with a hurt that really has nothing to do with Dr. Serban. But about the board, I serve on boards, and, and I'm comfortable in that venue, and I would say this. Board members make policy, and administrators do the administrating. And I see an ad administrator par excellence over there, a few of them that I remember from 10 years ago. They do that. That is why there's a little kerfuffle over micromanaging. It's wonderful that you find out everything, what is going on, but your job is to make policy. I see a former mayor who would just, would have to agree with me on that. And I urge you to use wisdom because for all of us in the room, for, against, this is politicizing academia in a way it should not be politicized. And maybe that's why the signs behind me that some of the folks here cannot see from young people 
are trying to say, please don't politicize Santa Barbara City College. I remember it. I love it. I worked so hard for it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. But thank you for your consideration. Keep your heads, folks, because wounds can heal and solutions can be found. That is minor compared to the future of this college. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. Uh, Shelley Cole is next to be followed by Steve Cushman. I'm sorry, my, my, my fault. That's okay. Um, thank you. I'm shy. I'm here to speak for all the shy people who really <laughs> love City College. I went to City College in the 70s and before I went to UCSB. My mother attended classes here. My daughter attended classes here. I attend adult ed classes right now, the ones that are still going. And um, I just want to thank everybody because I worked really hard to get you guys elected and I've had emails with you and I love Luis and I haven't spoken to you yet, but I know you really care about the college and I know you will want to save it and this will get better. So good luck. Well, thank you. Uh, Steve Cushman is to be followed by uh, Adam Green. Uh, good evening, Chairman uh, Haslin, members of the board. I'm Steve Cushman, President of the Santa Barbara Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber is the largest business organization in the Tri-Counties. We're 135 years old, and I've been the President for 24 years. Sadly, this is the first time I felt the need to come to your board meeting, your trustees meeting. Um, the Chamber considers uh, Santa Barbara City College to be one of the treasured institutions in our society. It, if not the most important institution in our society for the business community because you provide the employees that we need to grow this economy. Now I'm proud to say that Peter, and this is a small community, we're all friends, we're all trying to make this a better place. Peter, John, and Andrea have all been on the board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce. Because of them, the Chamber funds 10 scholarships for City College students, for students, non-traditional students, who agree to leave gangs to go to college. We also partner um, with a business school to provide microloans for young entrepreneurs. We believe in this institution. We believe that uh, all of the presidents you've had have made a contribution to our community. And it's just very sad for me to be here today and to watch this debate going on in the newspapers and on the blogs. You know, it's my hope that you'll find a way to pull this out of the public and manage this institution as I know you all can. Uh, thank you, Andrea, for being on the board of the chamber and for everything you've done for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Adam Green is followed by Len Jarrett. All right, so some of you know two minutes is usually something I can't keep to, but I actually probably will this time. So, oh, good. Uh, to the members of the board and President Sorbonne, I'm a faculty member here. I've been a faculty for here for about seven years now. I've worked a long time in the college, in the community, uh, working with the board, working with the president, working with staff. And this concept of cohesion and morale is, I think, the issue that the surrounding public doesn't necessarily see. That's something that's been a problem at this college for longer than the last seven months. It's been a problem for several years now. And it's, a, it's an issue that's affecting faculty like myself who are going out into the community, are dependent on donations to run some of our programs, and are working with students to try to provide a good example to them on how a college should operate and function. And we have really hit a new low. And it's really saddening to me and to other faculty on this campus many of which are not here because they're choosing not to be involved with this. We can't be talking about taking SBCC back. We have to be talking about how to take SBCC forward. So please do that. Thank you. Just wave. OK. And uh, Len, you're next to be followed by uh, Jim West Westby. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the board. 
As a donor and a college supporter for many years, I trust Dr. Surbane's leadership on behalf of SBCC. Dr. Surbane fully deserves an excellent evaluation, a one-year extension of her current contract. <laughs> I'm here to ask you to move expeditiously towards this conclusion and allow the college to move forward in a positive way. It's, a time for, it's time for the four trustees elected last November to quit creating a crisis at the college by undermining the leadership of our excellent president. You won last year's election in part because you received the endorsement of the Democratic Party, and that came about because Mayor Bloom was a member of the party's central committee. I would like to point out that the position of trustee on the SBCC board is supposed to be nonpartisan. Gaining a seat on the board with the endorsement of a political party should not be seen by you as some kind of a mandate to govern the college as you see fit without any consideration for the long tradition of shared governance that this college has always enjoyed. Your only mandate seems to be to support your contingency from the adult education division of the college. Those of you who were elected last year seem to believe that you have a mandate to fight for the rights of adult ed students who must now pay for classes that have historically been free but can no longer be supported by the state of California because of the terrible financial crisis that the state, our country, and the world finds itself in. I would ask you to consider the fact that you have virtually no mandate from the faculty, classified staff, or students on this campus. If you really believe that you have a mandate, then shouldn't you be supporting the complete mission of the college, which of course includes the credit division and all of the wonderful vocational training programs and not just your con constituents from adult ed? If you decide to terminate our very talented president, Sir Bain, who has led this college through some very difficult times, which do not seem to be over, you will be doing the college and the rest of us a great disservice and you will put the college in a position of spending money in a way that is not prudent for the times we're in. Thank you. Jim Westby, followed by uh, uh, Kathy McCammon. Good afternoon, board president and trustees. My name is Jim Westby. I'm a resident of Santa Barbara and a supporter of this fine institution. I'm here to speak about the closed session that's about to take place. The dismissal of Dr. Saban would not be in the best interest of our city college or our community. It would send the wrong message to the public that our college is broken and in dire straits, which is just not the case. This would impact our ability to fundraise, possibly affect our accreditation, and just in general, our overall reputation as an institution. It would also point the finger at the college staff, committees, and councils who have worked jointly with Dr. Saban to address the financial and other operation, operating issues. These were not made in a vacuum. We would also expose this college to significant litigation that could cost us millions, which we definitely don't need. I would also tell you, based on the last meeting I attended, that this board is dysfunctional. The 15 to 20 minute debate on how you should take minutes was ridiculous and it basically just took up time and accomplished nothing. What we all should be doing is pulling together and working to get us through this immediate financial crisis that we're facing. Not disregarding the college governance process, creating all this dissension and trying to fix something that's not broken. This is time and energy that should be spent in a positive way, focused on the real issues. If you have some issues with Dr. Saban's performance, tell her what they are and give her some time to address them. If you have ideas about the adult education classes, let's hear them. You should treat Dr. Saban in the same manner that you yourself would want to be treated. This is a simple rule we all ought to live by. Thank you for listening. Kathy is followed by Peter Georgiakis. 
Good afternoon. I'm Kathy McCammon, and I'm here today to speak as an individual. It's good to see so many people here, but I just wish they had been to more of the meetings so they knew what was actually going on. Events seem to be unfolding at a terrific pace. I'm very distressed that things are not working out as they should. Instead of people trying to get along and work together, what has happened is that all-out war has been declared. There will, this will do nothing but divert everyone's attention from the actual important issues. It is unfortunate that we have within our community some very sore losers. They seem to have forgotten that last November's election, the community was very clear. They wanted a change. They wanted a change in business as usual. They wanted clear information and fiscal responsibility. Now it seems like everything possible is being done to thwart the new trustees from getting the information they need in order to do their job, to make policy in a responsible manner and effectuate what the community wants. Now the college good, college's good name is even getting dragged through the mud statewide because a complaint has been filed by a small number of people who do not like the democratic process. They want to have an outside body do what they could not accomplish in a free and open election. Now the small group is trying to ruin the new trustees' reputation at the local level by using the traditional bullying tactic of threatening recall. Don't they realize that everyone's reputation in this kind of a process will get hurt? I say enough is enough. Stop the yelling, yelling of fire in a crowded theater and get back to the real issues. Stop the diversionary tactics that have the effect of preoccupying people while Rome burns, budgets get cuts, and all types of mischief can happen. Please remember, the main thing here are the students. They want and need a good education. Please stop playing war games and get back to business of education. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Peter Georgiakis is followed by Susan Owens. Maybe we could get Susan to come up. I don't know where she is. Do you? Is uh, Susan Owens here? Uh, there she is. Okay. Good. President Sorbonne, Dr. Haslin, board members, my name is Peter George Akis, and I have taught mathematics at Santa Barbara City College for almost 30 years. Prior to teaching mathematics, I was an attorney in Santa Barbara and gave up a lucrative law practice to come teach here. I would tell you to listen to your attorneys. Um, I've had clients who refused to listen to what I had to say, and the world caved in on them, because I knew the law, and I told them, this is what's legal and this is what you need to do. I am here, along with faculty and staff, to support our current president, Dr. Andrea Serbon, a person who truly cares about this fine institution. I would like to make a couple of corrections. The officers of the Instructors Association, as private citizens, supported the four candidates who were eventually elected. The Instructors Association did not. And as far as a mandate goes, Fourth trustee won by 123 votes, beating an incumbent out of 43,000 votes that were cast. But I am here to remind the board of some of the statements that they have made. It certainly seems like they all vote together and basically are a rubber stamp. I'm not sure that is always the best thing for the school or for our community. I agree with Marty Bloom when she made that statement to the Independent on July 26, 2010. She was referring to the former board, but isn't it the same thing if the new majority of four votes as a slate together all the time? Marsha Croninger made the following comments to Newshawk back in June. Shared governance or participatory governance is a legal right of faculty, students, and staff to participate in decisions that affect them before the decisions are made. And yet the timing of a particular agenda item 
the week after summer school is over and most faculty, staff, and students are not on campus really does not allow this to happen. I too believe in the motto, Behold, I have set before you an open door. At the very first board meeting with the new board, President Sorbonne's employee evaluation was put on the closed session portion of the agenda, raising concerns among some faculty and staff about the new board majority's intentions. Dr. Haslin said the purpose for bringing up Sorbonne's evaluation was simply to become acquainted with the file. He declined to comment on what occurred during the closed session, but did comment. No drama here, just an effort to act responsibly. I don't think the majority of this community, I am a member of this community, including the strong loyal supporters of continuing education, had in mind to dismiss our current president and to place this institution in turmoil. <clears throat> Please, no more drama. Please act responsibly. Support our current president, Andrea Serborn, and perhaps we can move on together as an institution and a community. Thank you. Susan Owens is followed by Mark Ferrer. Good afternoon. My name is Susan Owens, and I'm here as a, a voter. I voted for the new trustees because I saw and heard about a, a declining morale among City College employees, and I was concerned about the threats to the parent-child workshops, of which I'm an alum, and the continuing education programs, which I consider are an important factor in our community's mental health. And I thank the trustees, and I support their work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark is followed by... Um, Cochil Contreras, Mr. Contreras. Mark? Dr. Serban, Dr. Hassan, members of the board. Uh, I'm here because I occupy the same mass and space as the person who asked me to read this letter. Uh, it's Tom Gary. Uh, he's not able to hear, I'm not able to be here today. And I wish he were. I'll also say a few things afterwards. Is this hissing? It's hissing in my ear. So, Dr. Hazen, members of the board, having committed more than half my life, over 36 years, to the college, I have been increasingly astonished and dismayed at what I have seen happening over the past three years. As an educator and scholar, as an artist, and as a former academic senate president, I am dumbfounded by the growing divisiveness, anger, fear, and diminishing collegiality that has emerged over that period and that has now reached a level of childish mobocracy, which I believe he invented as a word. <laughs> Some would have us believe that where we are today is a direct and singular consequence of the election of a new board majority last November. They failed to acknowledge that the outcome of that election was driven by a growing frustration over the new leadership of the college and an apparent absence of attentive and engaged oversight on the part of board trustees. In a time when the college and community are caught in a physical vice, the voters elected you to guide the college through a process of rational decision making, and to your credit, you have tried to ensure just that. Unfortunately, an organized and shrill campaign against your efforts has driven rationality and reason from the discussion. You stand accused of major offenses against the current college president. Your offenses, asking too many questions, attending open meetings of various college governance bodies, proposing alternative solutions to the vexing, uh, vexing physical challenges the college faces, attempting to preserve as much of the college's allotted programs as possible, and having the temerity to actively engage in a serious evaluation of your only direct employee, the superintendent president. In short, you are guilty of doing the job for which you were elected. Bravo. Please continue to do your job. Please do what is necessary to return that focus of the institution back to our primary mission, the success of our students and service to our community. Thank you, Tom Gary. Now, I'd like to say something as well. 
we're on the verge of becoming Congress. So I really think we ought to start finding a way to uh, collaborate, to solve problems jointly, uh, not to set up camps, not to have people assaulting one another. I don't see this board actually doing those things, but around the board this is happening. And I really hope we can stop doing that and get down to taking care of all the really critical issues that face this college, including uh, appraising the work of a person who's made a, a best effort that she can make, a board that's making the best effort that they can make. And if we can't do it together, this, is, this will be the crisis that people are predicting. And we certainly don't deserve it, and we don't need it. Thank you, Mark. Xochitl Contreras, and followed by uh, Silverton Edgerton. I think you broke it. <laughs> and in an era of thing. fiscal responsibility, we may have to send you a bill. Oh. Now you broke it. Check, check, check. My name is Carlos Erecedo. I'm a course certified interpreter translator, Judicial Council Certification 300-249. I'll be doing simultaneous or consecutive site translation for Xochitl Contreras, who prefers to express herself in Spanish. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Mi nombre es Xochitl Contreras. My name is Xochitl Contreras. Y primero que todo, quiero agradecer a los miembros de la mesa directiva. And first of all, I would like to thank to all the members of the Board of Trustees. Por darme la oportunidad de expresarme. For giving me the express, to express myself in front of you. Quiero decirles que he sido una persona afortunada. I would like to tell you that I have been a fortunate individual. Que se ha beneficiado de los diferentes programas bilingües que se ofrecen en el Colegio de Santa Bárbara. Who has benefited herself because of the different bilingual programs that are offered in Santa Barbara City College. Los cuales me han ayudado a crecer en mi vida personal y profesional. Which have helped me to grow in my personal and professional life. Como colaboradora del Centro Comunitario de Educación. As a collaborator or cooperator of the community, community center of education. He visto como personas de nuestra comunidad I have seen how people in our community se han superado y han elevado su nivel eh, con la ayuda de los diferentes programas que ofrece el Colegio de Santa Bárbara. Have improved and they have risen to the level with the help of the different programs that are offered at Santa Barbara City College. En especial nuestra comunidad latina. In special our Latin community. Eh, por ejemplo, eh, las clases de inglés como segundo idioma. For instance, the classes of English as a second language. Computadoras en nuestro futuro. Computers in our future. Y la Academia Profesional de Inmigrantes. And the Professional Academy for Immigrants. Que le ha dado a los estudiantes la oportunidad de superarse y adquirir habilidades. That gives the students the opportunity to improve and to acquire uh, yeah, skills. Uh, que le ayudan a integrarse al mercado laboral. That help to integrate themselves to the labor market. De esta forma, como líderes en sus familias. In this manner, as leaders within their own families. Tienen también la oportunidad de brindarles una mejor calidad de vida. They have had the opportunity to provide for them a better quality of life. Y ser para sus hijos un ejemplo de superación. And to be for the children an example of improvement contribuyendo así al mejoramiento también de nuestra sociedad. Contributing so to the improvement of, the, of all of our society. Eh, por estas razones, for these reasons, le solicito eh, amablemente a los miembros eh, de la mesa directiva. I kindly request to the members of the board of trustees. Consideren la continuidad de la doctora Cervan. 
to consider the continuity of Dr. Servan como presidenta de nuestra institución, as the president of our institution, ya que ella ha apoyado programas because she has supported programs de acuerdo a, nuestra, a las necesidades de nuestra comunidad, according to the needs of our community, así como mediante los foros informativos, as well as informational forums, ha escuchado las necesidades de los estudiantes para enriquecer, always listened to the needs of the students, eh, para enriquecer estos programas. To enrich these programs. Finalmente, quiero agradecer a los miembros de la mesa directiva. Finally, I would like to thank the members of the board of directors of the board of trustees. Uh -huh. Eh, por su humanitaria labor que realizan día a día. For the humanitarian labor or work that you do day by day. Gracias a todos por preocuparse por la educación de nuestra comunidad. Thank all of you for worrying about or being concerned with the education of our community. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Sylvan Edgerton is followed by Ronald Green. Ronald Green is next. Good afternoon. I'm Sylvalyn Edgerton, an adult ed student, um, and I am going to be very short, brief, uh, to thank the entire Board of Trustees for doing the work that they're doing, and I wish you all the best in your closed session because you have uh, an awful lot of uh, distressful stuff to take care of. But I want you to know that I support you. Uh, and I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Ronald Green is next, and Ronald is uh, followed by Yolanda Garcia. Thank you. I would just uh, quickly like to review for a minute what the purpose of this particular meeting is. Uh, the meeting is called for this purpose, one, to confer with colleagues legal counsel regarding number one, written demands it received from private attorney representing President Superintendent Serban, and two, written complaint from private attorney representing Take Back SBCC regarding Brown Act compliance, two potential cases, and public employee discipline dismissal release, government code five 4957. This is why we're here. This is why we're making public comments. And I have a few public comments I would like to make after reading these sentences. Number one, if this is not politicizing this process, tell me what is. The second comment I would like to make is that for all intents and purposes, if the board of directors or board of governors of a corporation or public entity does not do a little hands-on work, I think they're not fulfilling their mission. I think, although this is not an exact analogy, look at the board of directors of the Enron Corporation. If they were a little more hands-on with the president, the Enron Corporation might still be here. There's nothing wrong with a board of directors having a little hands-on, getting down there, see what's going on. This is why I support the current board. This is not a rubber stamp. There was a rubber stamp in place for the last 20 years. The second thing I would like to say is, although Dr. Serban has maybe accomplished many things, she has accomplished one thing which none of her predecessors have accomplished. She has succeeded in dividing this community as none of her predecessors have done before. And I think this is something the board of directors has to take into consideration. And there was one more comment I would like to make. Once we start turning things over to attorneys, and the previous speaker was an attorney, and an attorney told me this a long time ago, there's one thing an attorney doesn't like and that's a client who's innocent. Thank you. Uh, Yolanda, and then... Uh, Rogelio Flores is next. Yolanda? Okay. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, she couldn't get a seat. Aww. Oh, okay. Good afternoon, President Haslin, Dr. Serban, and trustees. My name is Yolanda Medina Garcia parent education instructor here at Santa Barbara City College for over 30 years. I appreciate the opportunity to share my concern with you in the audience today. Welcome. I'm glad you all are here. I would, I would like to uh, let you know that I'd like to repeat this in Spanish, if I may. So I'm going to get through it quickly in English. I'm glad everyone is here today. I would also like to thank Jose Martinez for inviting you to attend during the interview on Radio Bronco on Tuesday, July 25th. I appreciate you taking the time to participate and be informed on issues relating to education. I teach in a parent education program where parents learn and practice effective parenting skills. One of the natural results of participating in such a program is developing self-confidence to stand up and speak out on behalf of children and families so to see you all here is very exciting. However, I am concerned that Jose Martinez stated that the ESL and basic education classes are running the risk of being terminated and that education for Latinos and their children is at risk. I would like to share some factual information that demonstrates the inaccuracies of this statement. The Board of Trustees has no intention to cut basic education. The demonstra uh, and ESL bilingual classes. Uh, on May 14th of this year, the Board of Trustees announced their support in favor of English and bilingual classes um, by electing section five of the budget in which no budget cuts will be made. I repeat, no budget cuts in these areas of enhanced programs. Um, such as ESL, GED, high school, and vocational programs. This has been done, and the English Learning Program has not received any budget cuts. It has remained the same as previous years, since before Dr. Serban was elected uh, president, and, excuse me, and plans to remain the same. Two, as a matter of fact, two new vocational certificate programs have been approved, and they plan to add more programs. These ESL vocational and basic classes are reimbursed from the state at a, rate, at a rate higher than other continuing education classes. This fact alone reassures me that the courses you want and need are not at risk. Scare tactics based on faulty information such as the statements made by Mr. Martinez distract from our goal as an educational institution. I urge us all to address issues with facts. I know that many of you here today are fearful of the Board of Trustees. I understand. They are new, and many of us did not know what to expect. However, this community voted on change. Hopeful these new board members together with the three experienced members will move forward and move our college forward. I would like to clear a few mistakes or mistruths that you have heard on the radio. One myth truth is that the trustees micromanage the college. My experience as an instructor attending many meetings indicates it is not the trustees who are mis uh, micromanaging. They are merely doing the job they were elected to do. In fact, in my experience, it is our current administration that micromanages. I am happy to give some examples of this, but in the interest of time will not do so now. Another mistruth is that the faculty and staff support President Serban. Of course, many do. However, I know many members of the staff and faculty who do not support the administrative style of the president. They are afraid to speak out uh, publicly because of retribution they have observed in the last couple of years. Finally, there is the mistruth that three of new trustee members are racist. This is a serious charge. And if it were true, I would be one of the first 
to complain. However, I have never, never seen or heard any one of our new trustees engage in racist behavior or utter a racist comment. I am glad you are here today and I encourage you to stay involved, but seek correct information by attending the meetings, including meetings with those who may have a different perspective so that you are able to make informed decisions. I also invite you con to consider our parent education programs. And to the trustees, please assist us in restoring the collegial respect and appreciation for one another that we enjoyed in the past. I trust that together, all of us, uh, will resolve this division in our community in the least painful and costly manner possible. We have already endured a great deal of loss, morale, financial loss, and much community support. Thank you for your time, expertise, respectful manner during these very challenging times. And if I may very quickly read this in Spanish as well. I Muy buenas tardes, Presidente Haslin, Dr. Serban y Sindicado. Mi nombre es Yolanda Medina García, instructora de educación para padres, y he estado aquí empleada en el Colegio de Santa Bárbara por más de 30 años. Les agradezco la oportunidad de compartir mis preocupaciones con ustedes y con el público el día de hoy. Bienvenidos. Me da gusto que estén presentes aquí en el día de hoy. También me gustaría agradecerle a José Martínez por haberles invitado a asistir durante um, su, entrevista, su entrevista en Radio Bronco el martes pasado 25 de julio. Aprecio que ustedes se hayan tomado el tiempo para participar e informarse de todos temas en relación a la educación. Yo enseño en un programa para educación de padres de familia en donde los padres aprenden y participan, uh, habil y practican habilidades efectivas para la crianza de sus hijos. Un resultado natural de la participación en un programa como tal es el desarrollo de confianza en sí mismo y ponerse de pie y hablar en voz alta en el nombre de sus hijos y sus familias. Solo que el verlos, solo el verlos aquí hoy me da mucho gusto. Mas sin embargo, me consterna el que José Martínez Cri, uh, citara que las clases de educación básica de inglés como segundo idioma, ESL, estén corriendo el riesgo de ser finalizadas, así como también la educación de latinos y sus hijos estén corriendo un riesgo. Me gustaría compartir alguna información que demuestra la inexactitud de esta declaración. Esta mesa directiva no tiene ninguna intención de achircar los servicios de educación básica. Esta mesa directiva nos ha demostrado su apoyo de los programas de educación básica y certificados vocacionales al haber elegido el versión número 5 de la opción de recortes al presupuesto este último 16 de mayo, en donde no se hace absolutamente ningún recorte a los programas que reciben financi financi um, financiación de mayor valor, que son los de educación básica, es decir, las clases de inglés, ESL, el GED, la educación secundaria y los certificados vocacionales. Sus intenciones son de mantener las mismas clases de inglés que se vienen enseñando desde hace muchos años, desde antes de que la doctora Cerván fuera la presidenta, sin ningún recorte de las clases de educación básica, inglés o certificados vocacionales. Además, se acaban de aprobar dos nuevos programas vocacionales de inglés y están planeando agregar aún más. Estas clases vocacionales y de habilidades básicas son reembolsadas por el Estado de, a mayor ritmo que otras clases de educación continúa. Este solo hecho me asegura que, los cursos, que, los, um, que estas clases no serán eliminadas ni recortadas. Tácticas de miedo a base de información errónea 
tales como las declaraciones hechas por el señor Martínez, distraen de nuestra meta como una institución educativa. Yo exhorto a todos a que abordemos los problemas con hechos. Yo sé que muchos de ustedes hoy aquí están temor, eh, asustados de la mesa de sindicatos. Yo entiendo, ellos son nuevos y muchos de, nuestros, uh, de nosotros no sabemos qué esperar. Sin embargo, esta comunidad votó por cambio, esperan, esperanzados que todos nuevos miembros de la mesa directiva, junto con los tres nuevos miembros, se, mover, se movieran hacia adelante nuestro colegio. Me gustaría aclarar algunos inciertos que pudieron hacer escucha, que fueron escuchados en la radio. Un incierto es el que el sindicato micro um, maneja el colegio. Mi experiencia como instructora asistiendo a muchas reuniones indica que no es el sindicato el que micro uh, maneja el colegio. Ellos están haciendo el trabajo que nosotros los elegimos para que hicieran. De hecho, en mi experiencia, en nuestra administración actual, la que micro maneja, eh, pienso yo que ha sido la administración. Me gustaría compartir ejemplos de esto, pero por el tiempo no lo haré. Sé que me han limitado cinco minutos. Otro incierto es el que la uh, facultad y el personal apoyan a la presidenta Cerván. Claro que sí, hay muchos que la apoyan. Mas, sin embargo, yo conozco a muchos miembros del personal y facultad que no apoyan el estilo administrativo de la presidenta. Ellos tienen miedo de hablar públicamente debido a la retribución que han observado en los últimos dos años. Finalmente, el incierto de que tres de los miembros del sindicato son racistas. Esta es una acusación muy grave. Y si fuera cierto, yo sería la primera en llamarles la atención. Mas, sin embargo, nunca, jamás he visto o escuchado yo que ninguna de nuestros, de nuestros miembros del sindicato, nuevos involucrados en comportamientos racistas o pronunciar algún comentario racista. Me da gusto de que estén presentes aquí ahora y, invi y los invito a que sigan involucrándose, pero los, les sugiero a que obtengan la información cierta al, al, atendiendo reuniones y haciendo preguntas con aquellos que ustedes creen que tengan una perspectiva diferente. Entre todos podemos recibir una bastan, bastante información para de, después tomar uh, decisiones bastante informadas. También los invito a que consideren nuestro programa educacional para padres um, y si gustan más información, con gusto se las doy. Por favor, ayúdenos, uh, mesa directiva, ayúdenos a restaurar el respeto colegial y la presión, uh, la apreciación de uno al otro que disfrutábamos en el pasado. Yo confío de que juntos podemos resolver esta división en nuestra comunidad de la manera menos dolorosa y menos costosa posible. Ya hemos sufrido un gran, una gran pérdida moral, pérdida financiera y mucho apoyo comunitario. Gracias por todo su tiempo, su experiencia y su comportamiento respetuoso durante estos tiempos muy difíciles. Gracias. Rogelio Flores. Rogelio Flores. Okay, we go to uh, Carlos Martinez. Uh, to be followed by Mark Alvarado. Thank you. Let me introduce Carlos Cerecero as my translator. Carlos Cerecero will be interpreting. Dr. Servan, Dr. Arellano, uh, Dr. Haslam, 
miembros de la mesa directiva, doctor Arellano, doctor Hassan, members of the board of trustees, todos los presentes, buenas tardes. For all of you present, good afternoon. Soy Carlos Martínez, presidente del Continuing Education Student Council. I'm Carlos Martínez, president of the Continuing Education Student Council. Muchas veces, en busca de intereses particulares de unos cuantos para beneficio de unos pocas, pocas minorías que sienten tener el derecho y el poder, la misión del colegio puede quedar a un lado. Many times, while searching for special interests of a few for the benefit of a few minorities that do feel to have the right and the power, the mission of the college could be left aside. Quiero recordar que nuestro grupo surgió. I would like to rem remind you that our group came out or surge came up por la falta de representación y constantes ataques hacia nuestra comunidad, una comunidad tradicionalmente desatendida. Because of a lack of representation and constant attacks towards our community, a community that traditionally was unattended. La comunidad latina es un fuerte componente para el desarrollo económico de California. The Latin community is a strong component for the economic development of California. Y por tanto, siguiendo la misión del SBCC, debe ser atendida mediante el desarrollo de programas que apoyen este desarrollo económico. And therefore, following the mission of Santa Barbara City College, that community must be attended by means of, the, means of developing programs that support that economic development. Como lo mencioné en ocasiones anteriores, por, prim have mentioned in prior occasions, por primera vez nuestra comunidad ha comenzado a sentirse bienvenida en el SBCC. For the first time, our community has begun to felt welcome at Santa Barbara City College. Por primera vez, nuestra comunidad ha sido y ha, y ha comenzado a ser incluida en la, y participado en el SBCC. And for the first time, our Latin community, our diverse community, have begun to be included in the Santa Barbara City College. Por primera vez, tenemos la oportunidad de participar activamente en el SBCC. For the first time we have the opportunity to participate actively in the activities of San Barbara City College. Por primera vez tenemos un superintendente que está escuchando y respetando nuestra comunidad diversa. And for the first time we have a superintendent that is listening and respecting our diverse community. Esto claro. It is clear, of course, ha lastimado los intereses particulares has hurt special interests de unas cuantas personas. Of quite a few individuals. Y esto ha significado una estrategia muy clara de ver. And this has a strategy that is very clear to see. Simplemente reestructurar el SBCC de manera que nuestra comunidad nuevamente quede en el olvido. Simply let's restructure Santa Barbara City College in a way that our community again will remain in the past or the, or the forgetness. Podrían decir que no, pero nuestra comunidad ha comenzado a sentir esta división. You may be saying no, but we in our community are starting to feel again this division. Que simplemente es racismo. Simply is racism. De suceder esto será un duro golpe hacia nuestra comunidad y colegio. And if this happens, this will be a hard knock to our community and to the college. La responsabilidad de esta mesa directiva es con toda la comunidad. The responsibility of this board of trustees is towards all of this community. No solo con algunos grupos que han sido lastimados. No only to some of the groups that has been hurt. Esto es un colegio comunitario, no un colegio privilegiado. This is a community college. This is not a college that is privileged. Con el actual gobierno, la actual presidenta, doctora Servan, es una persona que ha dado al SBCC una nueva visión. With the new government, the, act the current president, Dr. Servan, is an individual that has given Santa Barbara City College a new vision donde el derecho a la igualdad, la diversidad y la inclusión se perciben. Where the right to equality, the right to diversity and inclusion can be perceived. Donde cualquier miembro de la comunidad es bienvenido. Any member of the community is welcomed. Y apoyado. And supported. Hemos solicitado anteriormente esta mesa directiva de del SBCC, la póliza de cero tolerancia al racismo y discriminación. We have requested to the Board of Trustees of Santa Barbara City College, quote, a policy of zero tolerance of racism and discrimination. Hemos solicitado esta mesa directiva la transmisión de las reuniones en una transmisión en español también, no solo have, en inglés. We have also requested the transmission of these meetings of the Board of Trustees also in Spanish, not only in English. Corríjanme si me equivoco, no hemos tenido respuesta de esto. Correct me if I'm wrong, we have never received a response to that. 
Solicitamos el respaldo a la presidenta Servan por su trabajo realizado y el esfuerzo que hace para incluir a toda la comunidad. We request the support of President Servan because of the work she has done and the effort that she has made for inclu inclusion of all the communities. Lo ha demostrado con los buenos resultados que el SBCC ha presentado. And she has shown this with the good result that Santa Barbara City College has presented. Liderazgo, transparencia, gobernanza, Leadership, involucramiento. Transparency, govern, govern, governorship con toda la comunidad, towards all the community. ha situado el colegio entre los mejores. And she has placed this college among the best. He escuchado aquí gente expresándose, cuatro de los miembros. I have heard individuals expressing themselves, four of the members. Eso es muy claro, es una división de la cual estoy hablando. This is very clear, there is a division, that's the one I'm speaking about. Y esta división está llegando hasta nuestra comunidad también, no solamente aquí en esta mesa directiva ahora. And this division is coming all the way to our community, not only here in the Board of Trustees. Ms. Mary Bloom, usted fue alcalde por muchos años y tiene una trayectoria extraordinaria. Ms. Mary Bloom, you were the mayor of this town and you have an extraordinary trajectory. Creo que usted entiende perfectamente la importancia de la diversidad y la inclusión de I toda la comunidad. That, I think that you understand perfectly the importance of inclusion of all of the communities. No solo de buscar algunos, de privilegiar algunos cuantos grupos. Not just to seek privileging some few of the groups. Es inteligente tomar decisiones correctas que a veces no nos gustan. It's intelligent to make correct decisions that sometimes we do not like. Y la historia de la educación de los Estados Unidos nos ha, nos ha enseñado the history of education in the United States que, que siempre que hay un cambio trascendente de, de alguien que viene a poner orden, that comes and new order, en este caso la doctora Servan, in this case, Dr. Servan, aquellos que tienen el desorden son lastimados. Los que estaban en desorden son los que se en nombre de la comunidad latina, on behalf of the Latin community, el respaldo de pueblo, with the backing of pueblo, y de otras organizaciones, and in other organizations, queremos reiterar el apoyo total a la doctora Servan. We like to reiterate the full support to Dr. Servan. Hacia una evaluación positiva hacia ella. To have a positive evaluation towards her. Y solo quiero hacer una aclaración. And I would only like to make one clarification. La opción 5 del presupuesto que fue recomendada a esta mesa directiva. Option 5 of the budget that was recommended to this board of trustees. Fue una recomendación tomada por un grupo. It was a recommendation taken by a group. Donde están incluidos representantes de las divisiones. Where are included representative of all different divisions. No ha sido una decisión de una sola persona. It was not a one person decision. Muchas gracias por todo. Thank you very much for listening. Is Mark Alvarado here? Uh, and Sprecher is next. Is Anne here? Yes, she's here. Okay. And Anne is the last speaker. It's the last word. Yes. Before I start, I'd like to remind Mr. Martinez that our last president. John Roma was Hispanic, and I think that accusing people of being racist, you have to look. I'm sorry for everything that's happened in the past, but I think we're moving on no matter who is president. Um, I'm not here today to debate whether Dr. Serban is good for program A and not good for program B, and she's a nice person or she's not. The reason I'm here today has not so much to do with particular decisions Dr. Serban has made over the last two years, although these can and have been hotly debated, I'm here today because of how she governs. So much of a president's responsibility is to unite a school and get community support. On these two counts, Dr. Serban has been a dismal failure. Never in the remembered history of the school has there been so much division and anger. For as long as Dr. Serban has been president, she has shown a proven track record of disruption. She seems to support crisis over calm and that hostile attitude comes at a huge cost to SBCC. She has offended faculty, students, and the community alike. She has publicly insulted both donors and volunteers. She has offended a large contingency of older adults. 
She has caused the departure of the foundation's excellent fundraiser, Barbara Van Horn. She has created such hostile environment that an election was held to replace the old board of trustees. She created and continues to foster an environment where non-tenured faculty who are three quarters of our professors are terrified to say anything lest they lose their jobs. I personally have been told that I have no, unless they speak up for her, I personally have been told that I have no business talking to the chancellor's office and that I cannot talk to board members. I was told during the election that there was no free speech on campus except in designated areas and it took many weeks until they could find an area. I also was told by the administration that ideas are needed. When I suggested ideas, I was accused of dictating policy. Um, I, this is a president who has never has overstepped ethical boundaries and refuses to discuss her actions. During the last election for trustees, I was shocked to find when searching for candidates that Dr. Serban had already contacted people in the Hope Ranch area to see if they would run. Presidents should know they do not pick their own boards. But the board does pick the president. I ask this board to vote for what they truly feel is best for this wonderful school and not to do so because some very angry people are threatening to sue and recall them or because older adults want continuing education or the Latino population is angry about imagined attacks on their programs. I hope you represent the school and are not simply defending your friends. Recently, at one of the long, one of the longer serving trustees told me recently in a very nice social conversation, I feel I have to defend my friends when they are being attacked. And this is exactly the problem. The community doesn't want this to be a group of friends who need to protect each other. We need civil colleagues who listen to each other's different ideas and reach solutions that are good for the college. You, the trustees, are not here to defend your friend, Andrea Serban. At work, you need to look at the job she is doing and question, question, question. The Board of Trustees, this is the only form of checks and balances we have for the president. You are not here to rubber stamp ideas nor to listen to which groups threatens the loudest or can pay the biggest lawsuit against you. I hope you represent the school and are not simply defending your friends. We need to move on and heal. This president will only continue to make the wounds deeper. Dr. Serban, in answer to, Dr. to President McDougall, is taking this train off the tracks. We cannot afford to slow down if we don't want to wreck. And I also would ask that maybe you could explain for people who are confused my understanding about not releasing Dr. Serban's evaluation is that it's a um, private matter and that if you did so, you would open yourselves up to a lawsuit. Maybe you could explain that to the public since everyone seems so angry. I believe Dr. Serban is the only one who has the right to release her evaluation. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this, uh, <laughs> this concludes the 20 minutes allotted for public hearing. <laughs> Uh, we, we will move into closed session. Um, I have a point, point of information, parliamentary inquiry. Sure. Um, as a member of the board, I received this notice last Monday. So at this point, that's as much as I know about this agenda. And the reason, I, I know nothing why a special meeting was called. So I, I just have a few inquiries. I left you some reference material. So if you will indulge me, please. Um, and I'm pertaining my comments to 1.5.2, the third item on this agenda. Uh, so number one, I am curious why a special meeting was called instead of putting this on the regular agenda. Because it's the same day we're having a regular meeting and this could have been put on a special, uh, on the regular meeting agenda. Was there some reason that a special meeting was called? Council advised that it's a special meeting is uh, my prerogative, and therefore I did it. So it was done on your, because we, what we have in our board policies, 2320, is special meetings may be called by the president of the board or by a majority of the members of the board. So mm -hmm. you, you called this yes. on your own, and there was no consultation. There was nothing that led to this. You just did this on your own? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the other question I have now goes to AP 2341, which is the
the agenda. There's one thing to call the special meeting, but it's Excuse also. Excuse me, Peter. Point of order. To um, support. I, I don't quite understand this process, so yeah. I would appreciate some explanation from legal counsel on where we are in this process and what is appropriate. Right. It's a parliamentary could inquiry. We, could we have an explanation from our legal counsel on this subject? It's a preference stability according to Robert's rules that I have questions about parliamentary inquiry point of information. And I, so, I appreciate your point of view on that. I'd just like to hear from legal counsel. Any comments? We, uh, yeah, that, that's perfectly legitimate. Would you uh -huh. like to step up to the microphone? and? I did want to note that the last, uh, last year when there was an evaluation done, that was done in a special meeting uh -huh. also, but that was a regular evaluation. So this one is a different animal. Thank you, Dr. Haslin. Uh, you as the president and the board can uh, indulge a proper point of order, and it's up to you to determine when you think that it's gone too far and beyond what you and your board would understand to be the proper ingredients in a point of order. In other words, it's to raise points. It's not to initiate a substantive discussion, and of course that comes from Robert. So that would be my brief input on that. Okay. Thank may you. I, may I continue? Well, Thank you. Can, um, can we get to? Yeah, this is the point. First of all, we have to establish that it's a special meeting, and I was curious because our own board policy offers two options on how a special meeting is is called. So thank you for saying that you alone called this special meeting. Um, this leads to then the agenda. There's. You can set the meeting, but then also you set the agenda. So is the presumption that you also unilaterally set the agenda, or did you have any input or help on that agenda? And that would be um, board policy agenda um, AP 2341, which are the procedures on the agenda. And the reason I'm asking this is because those procedures apply to regular board agendas or study session agendas, but there's no mention of whether these procedures apply to a special meeting. And, you know, this is a, a distinction. And so the question I have about that is any agenda item placed directly on a board agenda, which you have done, you have put 1.5.2 directly on the agenda as a board member, that that item is placed on the agenda shall be initial. This is I'm reading from AP 2341. Any item placed on the agenda shall initially be for information only, which I would assume would mean that no action would be taken on that item. So if there's some misunderstanding of reading board policy, I am just asking for in my parliamentary inquiry, what is the status of that? Do you want me to respond, Dr. Yeah, Haslund? Uh, as to the very final. Uh, aspect of Mrs. Livingston's comment, um, uh, no, that's not correct. There is no restriction whatsoever when a special meeting is called either by you under the board policies that give you that authority or by a majority of the board. There's no limitation on what you can do in that special meeting. In addition to the agenda itself, of course, you were responsible for the posting of a call and notice that identified that this meeting was being called by you under your board policy authority as the president of the board. And you properly identified the matters to be established on the agenda. They both happened to be closed session items. In agendizing any closed session item, as you all know, as Dr. Serban knows, including on regular agendas, you have to comply with the Brown Act. Uh, in connection with the first two items, uh, the information was given that is specifically required to be given by the Brown Act. Uh, and likewise, the template format that is set forth in the Brown Act itself was followed to the letter in the last item. So the notice, the agenda, they're proper under the law, they're proper under your rules, and you have the ability, if you so desire, to now adjourn into closed session. 
Um, that I'm sorry, it wasn't germane to my question. My question was whether we follow our own board policy AP 2341, that items placed on an agenda by a trustee are for information only. So that would be my, my concern. Is this put on for action, or is it following the board policy that it's for information only under our board policy? Well, Joan, I was under the impression that we could put an agenda item on for action, and I did so. And, and I might add that an AP is an administrative policy, not a board policy. It is the administrative procedure that falls under the board The board does board not policy. approve administrative policies. It is the board procedure. So if we are going to take a departure from of administrative procedure under board policy agenda, the two are in the, um, in the, the policy and procedures together, I'm, I would just like to clarify that this is a potentially an action item, even though our procedures that we have followed in the past is when a single board member puts something on the agenda, that it's for information only, that it doesn't railroad something into a vote before there's time for deliberation, which I assume is why we have this AP 2341 subsection 3. Well, but, it, but it's not. Uh, AP 2341 is not on point. It doesn't cover this special meeting, which has been duly called. It addresses an entirely different set of issues. And so I'm afraid is, it's not pertinent. That is exactly the question I wanted to ask, because yes. it does refer to a regular board meeting or a study session. So we are simply creating new rules that don't have written policy for special sessions. That's what I'd like I, to know. I think with all due respect, that really is incorrect. This board policy deals with the ability of you as individual board meetings to request that specific things be put on an agenda, uh, and that's not the situation that you're dealing with here. Well, I'm, I'm satisfied that we've not violated our own rules. We are moving we forward to... You don't have any rules? You just kind of made them... No, 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 no. Joan, adjourned. that's not what I'm saying at all. I think well, we, we, have uh, rules we stand adjourned. We are going into closed no. session. Motion, Actually, motion to adjourn? Huh? Motion to adjourn to uh, closed session. Second. I'm okay if you insist. We don't really need one, but... Uh, yes. Excuse all right. me. There's a motion. There's discussion after oh. the second. I also need some clarification on the two agendas for this evening's meetings on the there's item 2.1 2.2 and 2.4 on the regular meeting agendas that I need clarification on because I would think that those items would need to be discussed prior to going into a closed session and that would help the closed session because item 1.51 on the closed session discusses communications with private attorney, which implies that there have been communications already. And 2.4, I asked to be placed on the agenda because there had been no meeting of the entire board prior to consulting with the college's attorneys. So those items, I think, might need clarification or maybe discussion prior to going into closed session. So if you could clear that, clarify that for me, I would appreciate it. Um, your logic makes a great deal of sense, but unfortunately it's not possible to do what you're suggesting on account of the fact that the items that you're describing are on the regular session agenda. They are not on the special session agenda, and they can't be talked about now. The only option that the board has is to pursue the agenda in closed session that is on the special meeting agenda. And then during the regular session, and I understand it may in your mind be putting the, the cart before the horse, but nevertheless, that's, uh, that is the procedure that needs to be followed. So thank you. We have a motion to call the question. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Okay, and I do have a, again, okay. point of order privileged. Um, minutes can be taken and a recording can be made of closed sessions under Brown Act 54957.2. That's government code 54957.2. I 
recognize the Brown Act says it needs a board resolution, so I'm just simply asking um, that its request for a recording be honored, but I know it can't be voted on. Okay. Um, my understanding is that's, that's not on the agenda, therefore we cannot. That is the correct understanding. Yeah, okay. All right. I think we stand adjourned. We, can we uh, take a little bit of a break? Yeah. Um, and how about two eighteen? Meet at uh, uh, at six ten. So our regular session will probably won't start till seven or maybe even seven thirty. Okay. Or later. Just we are here to report out uh, what we accomplished uh, in by way of uh, of uh, a settlement with uh, Dr. Sivan, like uh, Craig Price to report the specifics of the agreement. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as everyone here knows, uh, there have been hours of, of discussions and uh, uh, I am charged with reporting that those discussions have been um, productive and have reached a, uh, a positive and agreed upon resolution. Um, the reportable action coming from the board is as follows, that Dr. Surban and the board reached an agreement and understanding pursuant to which Dr. Surban is granted a paid leave of absence commencing immediately which leave of absence will continue through June 30 of 2012. During the period of this leave of absence, Dr. Surban is going to be available to assist the college with the transition, which is going to have to occur, and to assist the college in other ways that fall within her wide range of experience. During this period, Dr. Surban shall also retain the title of superintendent president. At the point uh, of time, uh, at the end of the leave of absence, uh, on July 1, 2012, the early termination provision, which is contained in her employment contract will be implemented and at the time that she goes off of the paid leave of absence and her contract is thus concluded, she will then receive, pursuant to the agreement that's been reached, uh, a payout of 18 months of her full salary and benefits. Uh, those are the fundamentals of the understanding that was reached between the parties. There are other non-monetary terms, and, and it was agreed that uh, because it's, it's beyond the middle of the night, it's the early morning, that there's not an opportunity now to develop a full written agreement. A written agreement will be developed and uh, approved by Dr. Serban, and then it will be brought back to the board for approval, and that will be uh, a public action that's taken. Uh, that's the essence of the agreement. It covers the essential terms, the monetary terms in particular, and I hope I haven't left anything out of uh, significance. I think that does it. The uh, motion was made to approve the contract, um, and those in agreement who included Marty Bloom, uh, um, Marsha, uh, Lisa, and Luis, and, uh, and myself. Um, abstaining was Joan Livingston, and uh, Maury uh, Jerkowitz was absent. He had to leave uh, a little early, actually not very early. He left at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that concludes our business, and we uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 May this be our latest meeting ever, please. Thank you all for hanging in there.